Welcome to Jamie TV and thank you very much for tuning in. In this video we're going to check out Numbrini's Base Driver, an absolutely awesome piece of software. I could see this becoming like an industry standard essential purchase for anyone who likes to dial in anything from a little bit to a whole lot of overdrive into their bass guitar sound. It's like a sans amp built into an awesome amp with speaker options, microphone options, it's got multiband compression, multiband overdrive, it's got parametric EQ, graphic EQ, just a whole load of tone sculpting possibilities available and it does that one thing that pedals and amps and software have been failing to do for bass players for so many years. It allows you to dial a whole lot of dirt into your sound without losing that essential big fat low end that's going to make or break your mixes. So let's have a listen to a couple more playing examples and then I'll show you how it works. In the same way as with all Numbrini's amp plugins, we have an amp face view which performs identically for both desktop and iOS users. But when we click on the cabinets button for the under the hood controls, things are quite different. We'll deal with the amp face section first, so this part of the explanation applies to both sets of users. Let me show you what makes this plugin such a powerful tool for shaping a sound that makes every note of your bass playing audible in the densest of mixes without being too loud. This is achieved of course with a combination of a great many tone shaping controls that have been cleverly combined into one piece of software. The real magic though for me happens in this multiband overdrive section. Here I've pulled down all the controls including the level controls pulled down for all three bands. Let's turn up the level on the mid, now we'll turn up the gain and blend that in with the clean signal. Now we can add some compression. The red light is indicating that the compressor is kicking in. These crossover controls change at what frequency range the mid section starts and stops. I want the lows for this sound to be clean and tightly compressed. So let's turn down the mid and do this. And now we can blend a dirty mid sound with clean lows. Now we've got the balls and the grind. So let's dial in some articulation. This nasty thin sound may sound pants on its own, but it's going to add the definition in a mix. For me right now, this blend is an estimated sound, and when I'm mixing a finished track, I'll come back here and balance the clean lows for the weight the track needs on the bottom end, the mids for that very present grind, and the top end for articulation. We can use this three band parametric EQ to sweep around and find the magic frequencies to boost or cut and add some presence here. And use the graphic for more refined frequency boosting and cutting. Now for iOS users, when we click this button, we can access the noise gate. We can adjust the input level of the bass guitar here 
and if this button is set to pre, we can blend into our sound the clean, direct bass signal. If it's set to post, we are blending in the sound we dialed in on the equalization tab. Before, the speaker emulation, which is here. Click in the window and make a selection from the included speaker and mic configurations or toggle through them down here. If you want to use the bass driver as a preamp before an amp, just bypass this cabinet and mic section here. The output control appears on both tabs and is your master volume. You'll see right away that the desktop version has a lot more under the hood. It's important to many iOS users that their apps are universal, meaning that they work on both iPhone and iPad. It's hard to imagine how all of this in the desktop version would resize to an iPhone screen. Plus, from experience, I can say that many iOS users would be outraged at desktop prices. But if you're only paying a tiny fraction of the price, I guess you can't expect all of the features. Instead of an output control on the front face of the desktop version, we have the master control, which is the overall volume before the recording chain. Input and output are over here. Don't miss this little switch, which will make your input level fixed as you move through presets, a neat touch a great many plugins could benefit from. The noise gate is here, and the DI volume is here. We can solo that with this button, and we have a DI tone control just here. Plus, high and low cut controls and press like this to switch between pre and post the equalization tab. Compression can be added to the DI with this knob. We can switch between four classic cabinets, and if like me, you're very familiar with industry standard bass gear, you will be amazed just how much it's going to sound like you plugged into one of these cabinets. In this window, we switch between four industry standard mics, and down here, we can move the position and distance of the mic. There's no little microphone animation to go with these controls, which would be a nice touch, but at the same time, it encourages you to use your ears over visuals. If you've chosen a cabinet with a tweeter, we have microphone controls for that here too. This is the volume for the mic you have on the cabinet and the tweeter volume. For some ambient room sound, let's go to this fader and switch between stage garage and studio sound. Then we can blend the ambient sound in with the DI, mic to cabinet and its tweeter. The solo, phase and mute buttons are really helpful. And if all of that hasn't given you the perfect bass sound, then kick in this bass enhancer control. Select a frequency to boost and then determine how much boost with the bias control. Note. Frequencies below the selected frequency will be reduced to bring focus to the boosted frequency. With this tab, we can import impulse responses. Go to browser and either choose a factory one or here we can navigate to one of our own and import that. You can import two and have volumes and pans for them here as well as phase, solo and mute buttons and conveniently you have the DI controls here so that you can blend accordingly. Finally, to use the bass driver as a preamp in front of an amp, just click this bypass button and now only the controls on the equalization tab are effective. And that's it, it's just awesome, right? So get it bought. Bass driver came along for me at the perfect time. It's just as I'm right in the thick of doing loads of bass guitar recording for a bunch of different projects and quite a lot of session work. So I've really had the opportunity to dig into it, put it through its paces and check out what it can do. And I would say that it's probably the best, certainly most useful piece of bass guitar software I have ever used. But an important takeaway from this video 
it is capable of everything from your very subtle, warm, round sounds through to much more extreme overdriven tones. If I had to do the YouTuber thing and think really hard to find a flaw, I would say it could do with a few more presets, but I've made a load of my own and uploaded them to my Patreon account. So if you're one of my patrons, you can just pop on there and download them for free. I hope this video was useful. If so, please do give me a thumb up and maybe ding my bell and subscribe and maybe even leave a nice comment. Or, you know, if you thought it sucked, then by all means, you know, just get on that comment section and tell me just what a stupid old hippie I am. Until my next video, take a care of yourselves, make lots of music, be kind and be good, and don't piss your pants about. See you later.